given the three vectors here, vector p, vector q, vector t, we want to find this, vector p plus vector q. Okay, and since I don't need this guy here, I'm going to put it away. Okay, so as you can see here, we're only given the magnitudes and the direction angles of these vectors. We're not given the components of these vectors. Okay, so what should we do when, when we want to add them together then? Well, we have the visuals of these vectors, so why not try adding them graphically? Okay, if we are to use uh, the tip to tail method, right, one of, the, one of the two methods that we know, then we're going to need the tip of this guy connected to the tail of this guy, right, of, of a vector Q. So I'm going to move a vector Q such that its tail touches the tip of our vector P, like this. Okay, so the resultant vector will be the vector that connects the tail of the first vector and the tip of the last vector like this. Right? That's a resultant vector. So this has become a trick problem, right? To find the magnitude of this resultant vector, we need to solve for this side of this triangle. And then we need to find this angle here, which is the direction angle of our resultant vector. But uh, this is not going to be easy because we first need to find out what these angles are first okay, within that triangle. And that is not going to be straightforward. Okay, so this may not be our first uh, choice when we want to solve for, when we want to tackle problems like this. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you another method. Okay. And this method has three steps. Okay, let me put them back first. Okay, this method here has three steps. Three steps. The first step, we need the tails of all these vectors connected at one single point. Okay, so we need the tails connected at one single point. Okay, the second step here. Okay, this is the moment uh, when I start bridging the gap between all the component vectors stuffs that I talked about in the intro video and uh, this type of problems where we are only given the magnitudes and the direction angles of the vectors. Okay, so the second step here, we need to split the vectors, all the vectors, okay, we need to split all the vectors into two components, x and y components. Okay, so we need to get the component vectors. Okay, splitting the, splitting the, the vectors into two, we have two uh, component vectors, right? X component and Y component. So that's the third step. Sorry, that's the second step. And uh, we also need to find the magnitude of these component vectors. Okay, so the third step here, we need to group all the X component with all the X we need to group all the x component and the x component together and the y component with the y component. Okay, then right, we will have a, right, a, a final form of x component and a final form of y component. Right? So since we have these two big components here, we can merge them back to form one big vector. And that vector will be a resultant vector. Okay? So um, uh, I'm just going to write a big word here, group. Okay. Group all the x component with the x component, y, y component with y component, then merge them back to one vector. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. The first step here, we need to get all the tails connected at one single point. Okay, so I'm going to move this guy to here so that the tails are connected at that, well, at this point here. Okay, that's the first step. So our second step here, we need to split all these vectors into two components. Okay, so let me quickly replicate this diagram here. Okay, we have vector P going this way. Uh, this guy has a magnitude of four and it's gonna go down for uh, vector Q. This guy has a magnitude of three. Okay, so let's take a look at our vector P first. To split our vector P into two components, we're gonna have one vector going completely horizontal. This guy is our P sub X, right? This is the X component of our vector P. And then we also, we should have one going straight up. 
Okay, this guy here is a piece of y. That's the y component of our p of our vector p. Okay, and while we're at it, let's figure out uh, the magnitudes of these two component vectors. Okay, so the magnitude of p sub x equals what is this? This should equal four times cos of what's the angle here? The angle is uh, sixty degrees. Let me verify it. Okay, let me move it a, a little bit upwards to see the angle. Okay, it is sixty degrees. So we're gonna mount, so we're gonna have four times cos sixty degrees. If you happen to forget how to um, uh, derive the components of a vector, feel free to check out those videos uh, under the component section. Okay, so the magnitude of p sub y equals four times sine of 60 degrees, right? So uh, let's plug them into a calculator and figure out what they are. So for this first one here, this is going to equal 2, okay? And using the, well, this ratio here, this ratio here, using trick ratios, this will give us 1 over 2, right? And 4 times 1 over 2, that's going to be positive 2. Okay, I'm going to hide this away. So 4 times sine 60, 4 times sine 60, this is going to give us, okay, so 4 times sine 60, this will give us 3.464, okay? Okay, so uh, that's it for our vector P. Let's uh, move on to our vector Q, okay? The X component of a vector Q will go this way. Okay, this here is our vector q sub x, the x component of our vector q. And then we should have one going straight down. This guy here is our q sub y. Okay, so let's figure out their magnitudes. Okay, and I'm going to write it here. Maybe here. Okay, so q sub x equals, okay, the magnitude is 3 and the angle, what is the angle here? Well, let me move this guy a little bit, move this guy down a little bit, so just, to, just to look at the angle. Okay, so the direction angle of vector Q is 315 degrees. If we want to find this little portion here, how do we do that? Well, we take 160 degrees and subtract it. And, well, we would have 360 minus 315 degrees. Right, so that gives us uh, 45 degrees. Right, so this little portion here is 45 degrees. Let, let me move this back. This little portion here is 45 degrees. While this guy here, 60. Okay, so for Q sub X, the magnitude of Q sub X, we're going to have 3 times cos of 45 degrees. Okay, let me... Grab my calculator first. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll write, I'll write out the magnitude of Q sub y first. The magnitude of Q sub y would then be 3 times sine of 45 degrees. Right? Now I, I'm going to grab my calculator and plug this in. So we have 3 times cos of 45 degrees. This is going to be 2. Point. Okay, I'm looking at the first one here. We have 2.121. Okay, our case of y has a magnitude of, let me plug this in, we have 3 times sine of 45. This is also going to be 2.121. Okay, so uh, that's it for our, our vector q. So we have found uh, the magnitudes of all the components of these vectors here. Okay, let's move on to our third step. So, notice that p sub x and q sub x are both pointing in the same direction. They're both pointing to the right. So, following our first rule, we need to find a sum of their magnitudes to get the magnitude of the x component of our resultant vector. Okay, so the magnitude of our sub x the x component of a resultant vector will equal okay, the sum of these two numbers. 2 plus 2.12, that's going to give us 
4.121, right? And since both of these components are pointing in the same direction, they're, po they're both pointing to the right, the x component of our resultant vector should also be pointing in the same direction, okay? This thing here is our r sub x, okay? Now let's, uh, let's move on to the y components. So notice that p sub y and q sub y are pointing in the complete opposite direction, okay? So following the second rule, we need to find a difference between their magnitudes. But the question is, which number is going to subtract which number? So let me put it this way. We have two people playing tug of war here. Okay, let me draw them. We have one person pulling in this direction, and then we have another person pulling in the opposite direction. So if this person has the force of 3.464, and this person here has the force of 2.121, who is going to win? Well, of course this person, right? he has or she has a strong force of uh, 3.464, which is clearly greater than the force of this person here, 2.121. So this, this is one way to interpret uh, uh, which direction we're gonna go. Okay. In this situation here, this, because this guy is winning, right, this person will be pulled in that direction. So both of these, uh, both of these people will be going in that direction. So that's the direction of movement. And while we add it, I'm just going to label the arrow here. Okay. The y component of our resultant vector will be going upwards. Because this vector here has a greater magnitude than the magnitude of this guy, uh, of, of this vector. Okay. So we are using that magnitude of p sub y to subtract the magnitude of q sub y to find the y component of, so to find the magnitude of the y component of our resultant vector. Okay, so we will have the magnitude of r sub y as okay, 3.464 minus 2.121, that is going to give us 1.343. Okay, this thing here is the magnitude of the y component of our resultant vector. Okay, and the direction is going, it's going to be upwards. Okay, because the p sub y is stronger than q sub y, okay? So now that we have the x and y components of our resultant vector, we can find out the magnitude and the direction angle of our resultant vector, right? Let me quickly copy the x and y components uh, down here, okay, r sub y and r sub x here. So to get the general shape of a resultant vector, we can use a tip to tail method by shifting this guy here to here. Okay. So then its, its tail is connected to the tip of R sub x. Now I'm going to draw our resultant vector and it's going to go like this. Okay. This is our resultant vector. So the magnitude of this resultant vector is given by the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Okay, so we're gonna have 4.121 squared plus 1.343 squared. Okay, and this will equal, let me grab my calculator. Okay, we have the square root of 4.121 squared plus 1.343 squared. And square root, square root this whole thing. We're gonna have 4.334. Okay, this here is the magnitude of a resultant vector. Now, uh, let's take a look at the direction angle of a resultant vector. Okay, the direction angle of this resultant vector would be this little angle here. Right, so to find that little angle, uh, we're going to use tangent, right, because we have the opposite, we have the side that's opposite to our data, and we also have the side that's adjacent to our data. Okay, feel free to check out the direction uh, angle videos if you happen to forget uh, how to do this. Okay, so the tangent data equals opposite, which is r sub y, the magnitude of r sub y, the y component, 1.343, over adjacent, which is the x component, okay, 4.121. 
Okay, so uh, data would then be solving with data. We have to well bring the we have to bring in the inverse of tangent to eliminate this thing, right? So then this side will also get the inverse of tangent. So in the end, okay, tangent will equal arc ten or inverse of tangent. 1.343 divided by 1.121. Okay, and this data is 18.05 uh, degrees. Okay, so the magnitude of resultant the magnitude of our resultant vector is 4.334 and its direction angle is 18.05 degrees.